workshop. Recently, I've been given some offcuts of wood. And I just thought I'd like to do something uh, a bit special with these pieces. Um, now this is Tasmanian black wood. Incidentally, all the woods that I'm using today is uh, all Tasmanian uh, grown. Um, and they, some of the woods are quite exotic. And this is um, Tasmanian black wood. Um, this is a piece of Tasmanian oak, which is actually uh, just an offcut of a, a, a piece of furniture grade uh, planking that I have. Now this is really special wood. Um, this is what's known as Huon Pine. Uh, now when the English, um, shall we say, found Australia, um, and certainly Tasmania, um, they came across this it's called wood. Tasmanian Huon Pine, because it's mainly found in the Huon Valley. Now this particular piece, now I don't know whether you can, the camera can pick that up, but the, it's very, very light, hence it's called pine, but the grain is very, very tightly packed together. Perhaps I can show you on another piece. If, you, if the camera can pick that out, the grain is very, very tightly packed together. Maybe you can see on that piece there. Uh, even tighter than, than oak, but it's very light. So the English Navy prized this wood because they started building warships. Of course, every tree uh, became the property of the crown. Um, but I have some. <laughs> so what I've decided to do and um, I'm sure some of you uh, wood turners out there will have noticed on my website that I have a CNC router. Um, and this is where it comes in handy because to, to, if you notice this is all sorts of shapes because it's just roughly sawn. And incidentally this is, this tree, this particular tree is probably, I, I mean I've tried to count the rings but is in excess of 800 so it's over 800 years old when this tree was cut down um, and they live to like five six thousand years old uh, so they're very slow growing um, very so old what trees. I need to do with this uh, as I, ca I can't put this through my thicknesser uh, because it wouldn't really make it flat because when it goes through the rollers it would tend to kick up and do all sorts of silly things. Um, you know I could try sanding it but it wouldn't be perfect because I want to layer these three pieces of material together, glue them up and uh, turn them up into a bowl. So what I need to do and look in the future it's going to be pretty normal to find a CNC rotor in a in a home shop, workshop, um, hobby uh, type affair. Uh, in the future it is going to be fairly normal. Um, so I'll just show you what it can actually do in, in this case. Can't walk on sleep, they can't I've see I've just you. been reluctantly uh, told that this is actually Tasmanian sassafras by my good friend Steve. Thank you Steve. Not Blackwood. Not blackwood, no. So now we need to write a very short program to surface this and uh, this uh, hue and pine and the um, sassafras off. So we've opened our cam up and the first thing we need to do is say create a new model. That means just create a, uh, a new um, area of work and in our case we are going to Go 200, 215 by 215, 
um, for this job really doesn't matter about uh, the points or pixels um, but the origin I like to use the middle especially with an odd shape like we have um, it's just easier to, to uh, define and so we'll say OK for that and first thing we do is say that we're going to draw a square and it really just needs to be rough it doesn't have to have exact measurements so that I can draw it within a millimeter and we're going to say that's okay uh, say create and close and we're going to go straight into the tool paths and go to the area clearance uh, start depth I'll zoom into the dialog box so you can see that's probably a little better for you okay so this is the uh, area clearance dialog or conversational or wizard um, start depth it's going to be zero which is going to be the top of the material finish depth I'm just going to go down two millimeters if I require more I can run the full program again and I probably will allowance don't need to fill that out this is just a straight area clearance or just taking the making something level uh, tolerance doesn't matter safe zero we'll give that um, let's say 10 millimeters there this is the safe position of the tool above the material before it rapids from one area to another uh, the Z0 position here uh, this indicates the where the tool is going to be just before it starts the program and where the tool will end up at the end of the program the tool will come to rest or the home position above the material in the center of it 25 mil above it and tool list so we want to add a tool <coughs> I'll just swing that a little bit now then we're dealing with let me see wood 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 uh, metal tools rough in aluminium so we need to go down here we here we go wood and plastic and we're doing it with an end mill and it's a 25 millimeter end mill and we're going to select that back to this dialog box now a new dialog box comes up now and this is where you can change the parameters or the speed and feeds of the tool um, which includes the step over step over 8.75 probably a little bit too much for this uh, or probably not actually but, uh, we'll go 8 8 millimeter step over which is about oh, sorry, three, 24 which is a third I normally like to use a third of the tool step over or 30 33 percent which that is roughly uh, step down five no we're going to go step down two it really doesn't matter because the program will be written with it only stepping down two anyway didn't really have to alter that feed rate 40 is okay plunge rate ah uh, oh, we can probably take it up to 15 but in Mac 3 I normally start off at 50% so that will be 7.5 millimeters per second now that's the thing all the measurements here the feed rates the plunge rate is millimeters per second now in Mach 3 they're millimeters per minute so obviously you have to times by 60 to be able to um, to uh, get the same feeds in both programs um, 
we're going to do an offset raster that means it'll go round in a box like this instead of zigzag back and forth in X um, climb milling absolutely fine if you go conventional milling what happens you get a bit of tear out with that climb milling is, is much better and we're going to go from the outside in in this case um, independent finishing dips no don't need to bother about that we're going to use ramp moves now this is where the tool actually goes in a zigzag formation and goes into the material quite gently and you can actually alter the parameters uh, in this small dialog box here but I always leave it in um, the set position because it works just fine so why alter something if it works fine so now we can tell the program or should we say set the material up um, and really it doesn't matter 15 millimeter is just fine um, top offset yes we'll leave it up there zero point of the material on the top on the top of the block or the top of the material that's okay so we can just okay that now we come to um, well just naming it really so it's just um, uh, let me see it's, what I like to do is just say it's a 25 millimeter and now so just put e email just to abbreviate everything you can it's really just to indicate to yourself what it is um, and I normally put the size in uh, so it's 125 by 120 Oh, 15, isn't it? See, I did that wrong. 15 by 115 by 2 millimeters. And really, that's all I require. And just calculate now and there in a flash it's calculated the the G codes and the strategy and it's as simple as that and now I just close that and save it to wherever I want to save it to a stick or whatever and then we'll transfer it to the other computer which is running Mac 3 Okay, so I've just got the tool centered over the material, it's just touching it. So now I can set the zero position in Mark 3 by going click, 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 and then regen toolpath, which then puts the material right where it should be. So that's the end of part one and uh, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this uh, video and uh, I hope you tune in for uh, part two of this where I actually machine the bowl on the lathe. So um, if you have liked this video please subscribe, press like, red box bottom corner down there, that will take you to my YouTube channel where you'll see quite a bit of the operation of the CNC router Mac 3 which operates the CNC 
uh, at CAM, which puts the programs together. Um, also wood turning and other shop jobs that uh, I do around my workshop. So, bye for now. <laughs>